Hey everyone and welcome to another video and today we have something special. We are covering my friend Niall's journey. Now Niall is a long-term MLA member. He was in the MLA for 15 months. He had a very impressive climb all the way from Platinum to GM. Now quickly, the point of this video, you know, I think a lot of people have some questionable uh, takes on what it takes to climb in league, how long it takes, what you should be expecting to get in a certain amount of time. And I think Niall... Um, you know, his journey is very realistic and uh, he's here with me today to walk through what exactly it took for him to get from Platinum to GM, which is an incredibly impressive climb. And we're going to go through step by step all the challenges he faced. And so hopefully you guys can take something away to your own league journey and, and implement some of this in your, in your own experiences moving forward. So diving straight in, Niall. Platinum, walk us through um, what the hell, what was going on when you were in Platinum? <laughs> okay, yeah. So, when I when I was in Platinum, I'd been playing the game for a couple of years, and basically one of those standard just play a million games, no process, do whatever type of type of players. Um, no sense of champion pools, no nothing. I had 64 champions played and ranked in season 10, no process, nothing like that. And I also had quite a few narratives in, in my head. Now I can see them all in hindsight. Uh, the first one being comparing myself with others um so i had a lot of friends that were very high uh in in rank i had like two friends that were masters at the time while i was plat and i would always compare myself to them because we were all plat at the same time at one point and so i had this right. narrative of time that was if we all if we're all putting in time to improve then we all deserve results but that's right, not that's necessarily it. how it works and i had to learn that the hard way so out of interest so, so some people have a different experience where they have high relo friends and they're actually a positive impact on their journey where like they feel motivated to climb and stuff like that for you was it more a negative experience would you say well i'm very competitive and I, it was definitely motivating but it was also it was motivating up until it got soul crushing i guess you could say right, because okay. i it was motivating it was motivating it was motivating and at one point i just couldn't take it anymore because my friends were getting results and i still wasn't i was still stuck in plat so it was helpful for this, a point do you think this was because they had either been playing the game for longer or was it like they had more natural talent than you or why is it that um they were able to climb and you weren't you think i think it's because i think it was just their gaming background like they had been high ranked in other games before they had been high ranked in uh like overwatch or things like that and so they had put in a lot of time and they had gotten good at other games meanwhile this was like this was my first pc game that i was ever committing right. to so oh, okay that's a really good point and and the other thing as well you said at the start here you spam games obviously no process you had 64 unique champs was that you did you genuinely think that that was the right way to climb or did you just have no idea and you're kind of having a crack um well i don't think I, I think the issue was there was just a lack of thought process in general. It was just, it was just playing. Um, I mean, I, I thought this was the way, I, I guess. Okay. There was no right. other way that I had considered, I guess, yeah. Okay. Just All picking right. whatever off a chance select. And then uh, a classic for very many people. It's that, like, a good win, a good loss that definitely, like, impacted my mood for the rest of the day. And it, not a good situation. Not, not a good, good situation. situation. But you weren't toxic, you says, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's... That's one thing I never had to deal with, like being, t uh, getting over being toxic. I always was like a mute all player because I just couldn't, I couldn't stand just seeing other people type. It just kind of drove me crazy. So lovely. So to to recap, where you were at plat, you had no process. You spammed a bunch of games. You know, wins or losses dictated your mood for the day. Uh, you thought that time equals results. Like you should put in the time you're naturally going to get results, which didn't end up working for you. You were comparing yourself with others, which led to, I'm assuming, just frustration, whatever it might be, um, but you weren't toxic, which was the upside. So now this leads into chapter one of your journey. So this is when you stumbled across my content, correct? Yep. And so I was looking to get better and I, I was looking around and I saw that there was the mid lane fundamental series. That was the first thing I ever watched from your content. And that was the main way that I focused on getting from, from plat to diamond. I would... I went through each of them. I think I went through warding first and then roaming and then tempo. And I would focus on them week by week. It was my, my main issue that I see with a lot of people is that they move on from their learning objectives way too quickly. Mm. And so I really just, I like if I watched the warding video and then for like the next week or two weeks, it was, it was only warding. And even when I felt like I got it down, I kept going because right. it, it, not only do you need to get it down when you're thinking about it, you need to get it down when you're not thinking about it. It needs to be like instinct and habit. So I took a long time 
going from one to the next. Right, and then so this is this three month period. So this is basically only fundamentals. So there's basically yeah. fundamentals yeah. are the only thing you really focus on. Holy moly! So the week by week you're going boom warding, and then maybe for a few weeks or something like that tempo, etc. Okay, and then yep. here you've got no complex topics or creative uh, creativity needed. Do you want to expand on that? I mean, I just I just think a, a lot of people overcomplicate. Um... Like, yes, there are complex topics that you need to learn in League, but not until you have the fundamentals. So mm-hmm. I don't need to be thinking about these crazy, like, jungle invade paths that I can do. Oh, can I invade the enemy jungler on their raptors at, like, two minutes? It's like, none of that really matters until you have your fundamentals down. So you so don't just need having to be a consistent bother. early game, like a yeah. consistent first eight to ten minutes, and that was leading to a lot of results for you. Yep. Lovely. And this at the time, were you were, by the way, when you were doing this three month period, were you playing multiple champs or just one champ? Or what did that look like? Yeah, I was playing, I, I had started to narrow it down because I was watching more and more of your content. I played a lot of Orianna. Um, I played Syndra. I played, I, I was just a very standard mage player. And then I found myself having the most fun playing Zoe. So by the end of this three month period, um, I was D4 and that's when I joined the MLA. Yep. And that's around when I decided that I'm going to mainly focus on one-tricking Zoe for okay. the foreseeable future. So you re- and that was, would you say that was influenced by like my comments around the importance of Jet Mastery, or would you say that was more intuitive? You kind of realized, okay, this game is very complex. I want to narrow it down a little bit. I'm going to kind of one-trick Zoe. I think it was... I just found Zoe more fun than any other champion. Right. And then I also knew that... I mean, it was just, I was focusing on what was fun. And I knew that I wasn't going to have much, as much fun as I would not one tricking Zoe. So that's just what I stuck to. That's so important, by the way. That's such a key message that I always say. You need to love the champ that you play. Otherwise, you're not, when it, when shit hits the fan, you're not going to want to overcome it. Lovely. Yeah. So and, here's chapter two, by the way. Oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, I just wanted to mention on, on that. I, through the MLA and all that, we, I mean, knowing one tricking does give you like a kind of narrow view of the game and there are negatives to it, but... I think fun is more important than any of that. So, I mean, obviously, y- you have to be somewhat reasonable. You can't be playing, like, eight champs just because it's fun. But right, right. you can cut some corners in the name of fun. Like, I, I only played, like, my biggest pool ever was two because I just didn't like having a very expansive champ pool. So I think just fun is really important. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. I, I think there's like a fine line though, and I think this ties into understanding your league journey. You can be a one trick if you want to be a one trick, but you got to understand, you got to accept the consequences of like the shitty Zoe games that you're going to face. Like you're going to have some terrible yep. Zoe games, but that's it. You signed that contract with Riot, you know, you're that Zoe one trick and you're just going to have to suffer the consequences. And I think that one thing I think you understood is that you weren't complaining, even like I would never see in the MLA Discord oh, I just had this annoying, how do I, you know, playing Zoe in this game is unwinnable, had these unwinnable games as Zoe. You just accepted them, you know? It's just like, I know I'm going to lose some games being a Zoe one trick, but it's not the end of the world, you know? Yeah, it was all about, I mean, it's kind of like you you dug your grave, so now lie in it. Like, if, I chose to be the one trick, so instead of complaining yep. about games that are going to be hard, I have to figure it's out the, the I have to figure out figure it out, yeah. Yeah, figure mm-hmm. it out. So this led to, this is your big, this is the MLA, you join the MLA, you're a Zoe one trick. Um, this is brutal. This is absolutely, this is yeah, where the, the, this, the grind really starts, right? D4. All right, so walk me through some of this stuff here. Um, yeah, so we, we mentioned before all the things that I had when I was plat of comparing myself to my friends and uh, just thinking like, oh, I put in the time so I should get it. And being stuck in D4 for four months really really destroyed that because like even more so um i was my friends were like still masters and i still wasn't climbing after i had a little bit but then back to no climbing and it was like oh no i thought i got out of this not again and then there was also the i'm putting in four months of time why haven't i gotten any better this is this is crazy and so i would like take breaks because i'd get too sad in playing and then i'd come back and it'd be the exact same and like eventually I just like stopped wanting to play league that much, and and then I, I kind of got desperate. Last call, I, I before I was like, okay, I'm I'm done playing this game. I was like, let's just get a, a Coach Curtis review. And in that, I just remember it kind of just was a wake up call of like none of the in game stuff matters that I was that I was thinking about. It's all the out of game narratives that were holding me back. Right, fascinating. So th- so these are some of the narratives that you had here. Right, yeah. Uh, it was comparing myself and then denial of my current rank. And that mm. that was 
a big one because at some point I had hit um, D2, I think just randomly, random streak, and then I'd come back down. And ever since then, I was like, oh yeah, so I was, I'm D2. And so when I was in D4, I was like, okay, I don't really have to review because I'll start reviewing in, in D2 because that's when the real mistakes are happening. Yeah, I'm a like, D2 oh. player. I'm in D4 now. I don't, I don't need to review this. Yeah, game. exactly. It was like, yeah. and it, you know, it's like, oh, I'm making these, these mistakes in D4, but I know that. I know that these are mistakes, so I don't have to review it. And then... That, that was even worse because now I'm just sitting there not even reviewing playing games in D4. And... and I think this whole thing, I just want to go back here, you know, there's some very important points here, you know. What I love about your journey, Niall, is that it's, it's, it's the raw, no bullshit look at what the average journey will look like for a player. You know, like I get, you know, some people come in and they might get that immediate short-term boost of LP, whatever. But then they have this stint where there's like, like you had here, months and months of just going nowhere. And, you know, for some people, it is genuinely trying to, un like, genuinely because they're trying to overcome certain concepts and build muscle memory and develop chain mastery and things like that. For other people like you, it was mainly what we call stage three problems, right? Stage three meaning more, you know, um, mindset, mentality oriented, psychology oriented problems. And, for a lot of people, it's it's not clear, right? They're very unclear. You don't know they're there. They, they're, we call them invisible narratives for a reason. We, we don't, we're not aware of them. And sometimes you need someone with an outside perspective to just call you out on your bullshit and be like, okay, yeah, you're actually playing well and your view of your champ's okay and you, you're, ticking the, you're ticking the box with the fundamentals, but you're just making these decisions and you're self-sabotaging yourself because of these stage three problems. Um so like you said here, constantly comparing yourself to your friendship group, which in reality now in hindsight, it, it's all a result of you not understanding your league journey, isn't it? Like you didn't have that sophisticated gaming background like your friends did. They're obviously going to have their ability to learn faster and view the game in a, in, a, in a better way than you. And combined with, I deserve to climb, pro you, I'm sure you probably thought you should climb faster as well. Like you're in the MLA, you're getting coaching from me, your friends are high elo, you've done all these yeah, work with fundamentals. Was... It was a it's, disaster. All this is compounding, right? It's just yeah. like a, it's like an explosion about to happen, right? And you nearly quit, right? Yeah. You nearly quit. I, yeah, there was like, yeah, I, I remember there was like two weeks where I just sat there like looking at my computer. I didn't queue up. I was like, why am I doing this? What's the point? And and the last resort was was the the review that we had. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the solutions. We finally <laughs> found some solutions. Here, so yeah. Through them. And so, first thing I remember you sending me a message that you're like, I think you're just you're you need to get over that your friends are improving faster than you. And so you, you recommended me the book Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. And that book really, in the book, he talks a lot about his upbringing and it's like the worst upbringing imaginable. Um, it's a lot about like, he, he had a very t tough childhood and it really puts a lot of things in perspective about how everyone has their own path um, and you have to work a lot harder than other people sometimes to, to do the same thing. And, that's just how it is and you kind of have to suck it up and i don't know reading that book really opened my eyes to th the fact that me not climbing it like and my friends were like I, it made me okay with that um so that that was that was the first thing that it kind of got me over comparing myself uh through reading that and then the second one i don't really know where this came from but i remember saying it and eventually i i just kind of looked at myself and gave myself a reality check and i was like how can I have the audacity to expect to climb and expect to get better when I'm not reviewing? It's like, how do I how do I expect to get better at playing the game when I'm not even practicing to begin with? Um, and that that reality check was kind of finally got me back into re reviewing, and that that got me over the de the denial of my current rank because when you're reviewing, you also see your mistakes, and so you see you see all the shit that you were ignoring before. Yeah, like, you've like brought it up to the surface now. Now you start to become aware of what's actually happening. Yeah, and, and if you're making these mistakes in D4, it kind of calls into the question, oh, are you really D2? You know, and right, so I, I got okay. over it. Right, that's so interesting. Okay, so then this leads to chapter three, the 1v1 dojo. Yeah. Sorry, walk me through this, man. Um, So thing, things, were, things were going a little well. I was, like, starting to hit D2 a couple times. I was a lot happier playing the game. I was having fun. And then I realized that every single laning phase was, like, the hardest thing imaginable for me. And I was really confused as to why. And then another Coach Curtis review came in. Told you this before, but I'll never forget. You told me my micro looked like an old man at the keyboard. And that was <laughs> that was when I was like, okay, this is a problem. We, we got to fix this. 
And so I, w I turned to 1v1s because that's probably the greatest way to improve on your micro, at, at least. And yeah. I kind of took it by uh, a trial by fire of I only did 1v1s for a little while. Um, and, and the biggest thing when it comes to 1v1s is I've heard, I heard a lot of people in the MLA say this before, where they're like, oh, I'm working on my micro as their learning objective. And then I'm like, what does that mean? Hmm. And, and there's no answer. Um, so working on your micro is not actually a learning objective. It's just like a topic. Like That's like saying you're working on your macro. It, it doesn't really right. make any sense. And so I would get, in that one week where I just did 1v1s instead of playing solo queue, I would go into my review and literally look at like the clicks uh, uh, I would do a 1v1 or like do a couple, play like Oriana versus Syndra, get some like skill shot heavy matchup, and then look at the clicks. And every time I ate a Syndra queue, I'd be like, what happened there? And, and then I'd write it down on a spreadsheet, and then I'd go to the next one, go to the next one. And then you'd start to see trends. And then I realized, oh, I'm bad at tethering the enemy's skill shots. And then once I got better at knowing the, the range of my enemy's skill shots, I realized, oh, I wasn't good at tethering my own range of skill shots and, and things like that. It, it and you go, you go piece by piece. You can't work on all these things at once, and I can't even work on these things in, like, solo queue games at all. Like, I can only improve these things personally when I'm working on these in 1v1s. And so I would go piece by piece, and the same thing, like I said, when I was working on Fundamentals, it would, like, I'd spend, like, a whole day just, like, okay, I'm going to play, like, I know one I did a lot was, I think it was Oriana versus Anivia. And I was like, okay, I'm going to fake CS because in that matchup it's, to bait out mm. a Nivea Q, you can fake yeah. a CS, and that's a really good way to do it. Yeah. And I would spend like a day playing those types of matchups and working on faking mm. CSing and making sure it was like really becoming habitual. And then the next day, I might do it again or move on to the next specific topic. So like the biggest thing about working on micro and the reason that people get stuck or the reason why people don't think they can improve it is because they're always just working on micro, but no real nothing beyond right. that. They don't know. They don't know what is within micro because this is yeah. a buzzword at the end of the day. Macro and yeah. micro are just buzzwords, right? Yeah. I think I remember getting into review and we like we we spoke a lot about faking CS. That was a really big one. Faking CS is is I would say like fifty percent of it. Faking CS and tethering, you know, tethering the enemy range and tethering your range is basically like you know that's that's majority of it. But yeah, dodging patterns that's another big one. And and that's what the one thing about like the MLA you had other people who kind of you could kind of tee up with, and that's like what I liked about. What that, that especially at the time at that time in the MLA, I think we there was a massive emphasis on one v one. I would say yeah. it's less so now. There's like a it's kind of like metas of the MLA, isn't it? There's yeah. like a meta of the MLA where I think there's a few months where I think everyone was obsessed with one v ones and like yep. leveling up their micro. And I think you know once people kind of got that done, then people moved away because I think you know one v ones are very interesting because I used to be big on them and then I'm not so much anymore. I, I feel like. I feel like the thing with 1v1s, and feel free to disagree, but I, you just got to know exactly what you're trying to get better at. There's no point yeah. just like grinding 1v1s for the sake of what, because it like sounds cool and it's like sexy. It's just like, you just got to come in. It's like, I want to test a specific thing. I want to get better at this specific thing. Or I want to try this item start in this matchup or start this, like max this ability and see how that affects it. Like you can't just grind them mindlessly. You're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, the biggest thing I see is like people play 1v1s like basically for fun at least is like what it looks like in the MLA yeah. at times but yeah I, I would say because I would literally do a, like three 1v1s which would take like 20 minutes or something because mm. we played a level 6 and then I'd go leave for an hour and I'd, mm. I'd watch the VODs of just those three and like write mm. down looking at the clicks looking at every skill shot that I ate looking mm. at the trends and then I'd come back later and be like, do three more. Like, it wasn't just like going, going, going. It, it was, wasn't just I was reviewing going, more yeah. than I was even 1v1ing. And I also found that when people play 1v1s, they play differently. They play as if the yeah. jungle doesn't exist. Have you noticed that? Yeah. It's like they go into 1v1 and then you see them like w walking on a tower without wards. I'm like, you're never going to do yeah. this. Yeah. In the and so I personally, I'm not a big 1v1 fan, except for micro specifically. Except for micro, but, yeah. But I besides agree. that, I don't, don't want v one at all. Okay, so by the way, this do this dojo stuff, this got you to D1. So now you've kind of got the fundamentals. Now you've kind of got the micro up a little bit. You've kind of been more aware of your stationary problems. You've got the mindset down pat a little bit more. Um, and now you've had, this is called chapter four, the moment. This is in one month, you went from D1 all the way to 100 LP in master tier. So walk me through this. Yeah. So after I had done the, the 1v1s, um, I lanes were extremely easy for me because I'd extensively drilled yep. it so i hit d1 and then uh came around um came around the 
the term destroying the enemy nexus something yep. something you favorite. say a lot and something that that comes into play like d2 and beyond or d1 and beyond low masters is is when you have to start to understand what that means yep. and this is like the biggest buzzword i've ever seen in my life but i but i get why because there's no there's no amazing way to describe it but eventually i watched a mla resource that kind of described the checklist you have to go through uh, so first you have to have your fundamentals and your warding, your leaning, your first eight to 10 minutes have to be solid. You have to have your champ mastery. You have to know what your champion wants to do as a champion. Is it like skirmishes, how you play skirmishes, your itemization, things like that. Just have like very little mental energy on that. And the same thing with matchups. You have to know like your first three waves and then you have to know like the, the general strategy one to six and post six and things like that in your matchup. And then you can consider destroying the enemy nexus. And how I would describe that is... It's a tough one. It's yeah, a tough one, it, isn't it? It's Because the reason I call this the moment is because eventually I, I saw this, this resource and then it just clicked. And it suddenly clicks, yeah. it, it was a switch was flipped and I got it. Um, and it's, it's all about just once you have your solid foundation and your 8 to 10 minutes take very little mental space, you can start thinking about you're not playing... Mm the mid lane you're playing the game as a whole you're playing and... league that's why i always say master tier zero lp is when you're actually playing league of legends as a yep. whole you're not really playing league up until master you're playing like your mini game in a way yeah you're playing like <laughs> your subsection of the game you're playing one subsection of the game spot on yeah and and so the only way I, the only thing i can say about this is, is you just have to get these first three concepts down so much yeah. that like once you have um that much mental space just free space to do anything and you can start thinking about anything mm -hmm. then you can start taking in the information of like the junglers and the, the side lanes and how they're playing out because exactly. now you have all the space so you, you might as well be thinking about it and that's when you can start to get it but what i'll say on this is that people people who watch this and you know i made that resource and i think some people get it and it clicks and like wow that makes so much sense and they get massive results from it other people they don't get it it just and I feel like the biggest differentiator for the people who do and don't understand it, it's like a feeling. Once you have felt like, I'll give you a very pragmatic, a very, very relevant example for me recently. I'm learning Ari, right? I don't, I don't play Ari. I, I am recently learning it. I'm 40 games deep. It literally wasn't until my last three block with Ari that I finally felt I had the mental stack to think about the game holistically. And it was only at that point now that I feel like I know how to somewhat approach killing the Nexus. Every That 37 games or 38 games pretty much was all me playing Ari in a mini game, essentially. I'm purely reacting to what's ever in front of me. On that 39th, 40th game, I'm now able to think, okay, what sort of game pace do I want? Who are my win conditions? How do I see myself winning this game? How important is that Rift Herald? Do I need to contest that dragon? What's going on top? What's going on bot? Where's my jungler? These are pieces of information that I wasn't able to think about before because I'm so tunneled on my 1v1, my items reacting to bullshit in front of me because I don't have the mental stack. But once you feel it, it becomes a point in your journey with that sham mastery, with the fundamentals and you get the matchups step out, it just clicks. It kind of clicks. And it doesn't mean you're a master in this, right? Does it? It doesn't mean you've nailed it. It's just like, you just, le at least you know kind of how much room there is to grow. Yeah, it's it? like you can see the path of where, like, what's next to improve on it. Um, yeah, I remember before I had had this moment, I had a very cookie cutter formula of playing League of, like, mm -hmm. every single game. It was get the first four dragons and then um, follow your ADC around and, like, yeah. try and get them kills, whatever like that. And there was never any, there was never any adapting to, oh, maybe my top laner's the carry this game. Mm. Oh, maybe dragons aren't as important this game. Things like that. So those mm. adaptations started to happen once I had the, the space to think about it. That's when I got it. Yeah, I love it. Um, so that got you to 100 LB master. Now we're in chapter five refinement. So this is the big climb. This is it. This is the refinement seven month period, 100 LP master to 550 LP grand master. So walk us through this. Yeah. And, I mean, part of the reason that this block was so big is there was, like, preseason uh, dropped right in the middle of this, so it was a lot of adapting. Um, but besides that, uh, it, it's all refinement. Because I had addressed my Stage 3 issues already, and because my fundamentals were down, 
I it kind of felt like it, it wasn't a matter of if you can climb now, it's a matter of when. Uh, w- once you have your, your stage three and your fundamentals down, it, it feels like you can see, mm. you can, you're can you just chugging forward. There's no like major roadblocks that are going to throw you off your tracks unless there's like a really difficult concept. Because you've got that, you've done the work before, like you've put in the work before to deal with those stage three issues. So nothing can really bite you in the ass anymore. You've got rid of like the, the nasty roadblocks that could really come up. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and so it was just blocking every day whenever I could. Um, and then always just furthering Furthering my process of, of reviewing. So asking yourself always, like, what makes a, a good review? And to me, uh, the thing I always turn to, if I ever have, like, a really bad game or I'm really tilted or something, I, I open up the bottom, like, okay, no matter what, I'm going to learn at least one thing. No matter what, I'm just going to take at least one thing from this VOD so so it's not a, not a waste. And that could be something as simple as, oh, I shouldn't stand in the, uh, like, I shouldn't stand in the minions versus like this champion uh, levels one to three whatever even if even if it's something that small to me a good review is i put an effort and, and i take at least one thing and then this third point asking why this is the this is kind of like one of the biggest things i want to I, I tell people and one of the biggest concepts i want to spread more is let me give you an example so let's say you're playing oriana versus akali and you three minutes 30 you die to a jungle gank well, uh, a lot of people ask, oh, they'll look, open up the VOD, they'll be like, okay, why? And they're like, oh, I didn't get my ward down. And then th- that's their, they, they write in their notes, okay, get your ward down at 3.30, and that's it. But that's that's not enough, because le- like, let's say you're a diamond player that did this. More than, uh, more than like more likely than not, you know to get your ward down. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, why didn't I get my ward down? Oh, I wasn't thinking about it. Why wasn't I thinking about it? Oh, I was focusing on my matchup really hard. So then, instead of it being, oh, I need to get my ward down, and that's your takeaway, it's actually, oh, I need to get more comfortable with Oriana versus Akali, and then the warding will come. And so that, that's the biggest thing. People stop asking why way too early before they get to where the real learning is actually, where, where the real mm. learning is. Mm. And this is the biggest I like thing that. I emphasize. Cause, right, try to dig, dig to the core. What's the core fundamental reason? Where is your attention being focused? Yeah, because so many people like they they'll take the symptoms of the of a problem like they'll be like mm-hmm. oh i didn't get my ward down oh i didn't lean to the proper side and they'll write that yeah. up. oh i gotta focus on that but when the core problem of it is oh my attention was pulled by my matchup oh i'm not comfortable playing versus assassins oh something like that then you'll never you'll never fix that core problem if you don't if you don't introspect and actually ask why these symptoms are happening people don't respect the concept of like your attention like they 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 feel as though your attention can be like omnipresent like it can be everywhere like a lot of the time your attention your attention's only going to be on one main area so the question is okay do i not have enough muscle memory right now like which is basically what you're saying in that situation i don't have enough muscle memory right now in the matchup to be able to direct my attention elsewhere or was my attention focused somewhere where it shouldn't be Right, that's a, that. Yeah. That could be the, that could be the that could be the thing. Right, it was like oh, I I thought that the jungler was going to do this path, so I didn't think I needed to ward there. That's a very different problem, right? The same outcome from that from the from the from the the end point. It's like okay, there's no ward here, but the reason why you didn't ward can be very very different, and that's the main point, right? Yeah, um, it's it's just asking the why. Asking the why. I I thought you were actually going to go somewhere different with this, and and I don't know if this is it might be a tangent, but let me know if this is relevant. Um, in league, did you ever in this in this journey, kind of ask why when it came to okay, I went for like a roam top and asked why you did this. Was this the most impactful play? Because you know we talk about consequences of your actions. Like, okay, I'm gonna now go for a roam top, but then that leaves my bot lane exposed. Did you ever kind of? go through the consequences of your actions and like weigh up stuff if that makes sense yeah it, it was kind of like it was kind of um it, it, was, it was almost i did it kind of the opposite where if my top lane would get roamed on like uh my mid laner would would roam top i right i would i would be like okay why did they get to go top and i'm like okay right, okay i got a I got a double kill on bot lane okay like why did I did I did I know my top laner was gonna get roamed on? Like why didn't mm. I see that coming? It, it it's always just yeah I just look at a symptom whatever it may be and just well, go you look at a negative it. result and then kind of go back from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. and even a negative result could have been, oh my top laner could have gotten roamed on here. That that's a big right. one. It's like yeah. oh 
I see the mid laner getting plates mid, but he could have gone top, and I he could have just roamed top. I could have assessed tempo, yeah. that. All right, so yeah. yeah. And what's this last one here? How do you get higher intensity? Yeah, that was a big one from. That was like the difference between GM like 300 and GM uh, 500 was the intensity. Uh, how can I get higher intensity? That I was always asking myself that in, in my days. And it was like, I mean, a lot of it came down to like, when do I eat? Like, do, should I eat before or after a block? Because sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like tired after I eat something like that. Um, or like, and it was also like a lot of getting good sleep. Um, and then a big one was low, low dodge game came around and that was a really good one for me since my queues were around like 10 minutes long on average, I'd always just play low dodge game in queue and that was really good for me. But I was always asking like, if I ever was sitting at my computer and I'm like too tired to play, it, it's the same thing. I'd ask why and, yeah. and I'd go from there. And so you kind of use the same technique in real life as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So. Okay. So this is your, your reflection. Okay. So yeah, let's go through this. This yeah. is your formula, your formula. Niles formula from Platinum to GM. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it's going to be different for everyone, but if I right. were to to sum it up in, in the way that I think would be the most consistent across the board, it would mm. be working on these following things in order. So the first one is just your champ, is just champion mastery. Like, you have to pick a ch champ that you love and just, like, know what they do, first of all. Like, for example, you, you were explaining earlier how you were playing Ari and it took you 40 games to just even stop just, like, focus solely on playing Ari and like getting used to the champion like you have to be used to the champion you're playing you kind of have to know your idea you, you have to have your pool down basically for, for your first step which a lot of people do um second one uh learning the fundamentals much in the way that i did in in, in platinum of going like i mean not necessarily week by week but focusing on one making it a skill that you got down and then making it a habit and then moving on to the next one. So practicing right, don't, it. Don't jump the boat too quickly. Yeah, yeah. Really focusing on them and re respecting them like one at a time. Really acknowledging like, why are you warding? Like, what, what's the point? Like, uh, oh, you get you get to know where your jungler does. Get to know where the enemy jungler is. Okay, what does that do for you? Like really knowing and respecting each of the fundamentals and like acknowledging like these are big concepts that I need to know and not taking it lightly. Um, then from there, you can move on to your matchups. Um, and the, when I'm looking for a matchup, usually personally for Zoe, I've, um, I create buckets for every champion that I play. Um, so for Zoe, I have like mages that I can contest levels one to three mages. I can't contest levels one to three assassins, then champions that go D shield and then some other cases. Um, but you, you have to know how and that, that kind of the buckets help you in, in what i'm about to say you have to know how to play your first three waves in every matchup and have a general plan for one to six and six and beyond and thinking about having having that plan a detailed plan for all like 40 ch mid lane matchups can be overwhelming but once you bucket it it starts to get a lot easier yeah people don't understand that bucketing is very very important like when you're playing zoe versus Ori, Syndra, Victor, it's going to be pretty similar. And then Zoe yeah. versus, like, Kiana, Fear is pretty similar. Yona, Yasuo, pretty similar. Like, it's all, they're all pretty, you can bucket them up quite nicely. Yeah. And then it's also just respecting that, like, within the buckets, you also have to know the the intricacies of how is Syndra different than Victor. Syndra is a, a lot of more of, like, attacking the mana pool and dodging, That's baiting right. out Qs. And... But there's all levels to that, right? You don't but need yeah. to go from, you know, going from yeah. plat 2 to D two is very different from going d2 to master and then master to gm like all of them are very very different so yeah, yeah. so at the very least have your buckets down that's, that's right what i would say um and then the fourth one being win con assessment we've we've talked a lot yeah. about it um but i always thought it's just like the fundamentals is you, you get tools and then every time you're loading up into a league game it's like you've been you're opening up random cardboard box of random random like uh materials, materials and yeah. you have to build some sort of house to the best of your ability that that's like the best that. way that I think about it. But it's a great analogy. And then once once you're in high elo, like master, like I found this in in like masters two hundred plus for NA. Um, was sometimes you break the rules. Sometimes you break the fundamentals. Sometimes sometimes you have a wave building into you, or like two waves, and but you have to sack it, and you because you know that if your bot lane gets dove here, you're gonna lose the game. So getting creative to me is all about just knowing when you have to break the fundamentals um yeah. and and just do it learning those on a case-by-case -case basis um and this yeah. order it's important you do it in this order well also in my i use this as a review tool as well right so okay if i'm in review 
and there's a, a fundamental mistake of like, I didn't get my ward out, so I got ganked and died, then I won't even bother going on to how should I have played the matchup? How should I have like assessed my win cons better? Because it, you, you stop. The game's not replicable. That's, yeah, that's the problem. You, it's kind of like a step process. So once you check every box, you can. That's how I review. Yeah. I reviewed in that order. And that actually makes a lot of sense because if you're playing a champ that you don't have mastery on, who gives a shit about the matchup understanding or yep. your win con assessment? If you don't even know fundamentally what your champ wants to do, then. <laughs> and then no it, yeah, and then if you can't have a safe laning phase, like in general on like on average then who cares about how the matchup is going to play if you're just randomly going to get ganked 100 percent. So. yeah i really love that really really good um okay so these are your tips for process yep and so i mean it, stage three issues are tricky because nobody like purposefully has them yeah but as soon as you identify um that that something's going wrong it, it's as soon as you feel like oh i'm getting really tilted off of x thing like really think about that and really really challenge that because climbing without stage three issues is infinitely easier than, than climbing with them it's it's like if you it's kind of like you the more stage three issues you have the more tunnel vision you get in, in review mm. so if there are like a hundred things you can learn from a review every stage three issue you have like cuts that number in half yeah and you, you see there's... less and less you see less and i think the other thing for this is that you see what you want to see when you have stage three issues, you know, if you believe that you are the victim of many games or X champion is OP or your champion is bad, you're going to look for the evidence that suggests that you are correct. And you're going to block out the evidence that suggests that you're incorrect. And this will actually happen. This is like selective attention. You're actually not even going to be aware that that's happening. And so I would recommend for people who do have like maybe some psychology, mindset, mentality issues, my um, psychology playlist uh on my youtube um uh yeah so that's the best best bet i have a lot of stuff on the in the mla but if you're not in the mla yeah probably the psychology playlist on youtube um also the bb uh broken by concept podcast we talk a lot about this stuff so broken by concept podcast in the description um check that out if you're interested as well so there's a lot of great stuff there yeah i would say like it's it's easier said than done to challenge your stage three issues but in yeah. terms of some of the resources you said yeah i would listen to that podcast weekly and i'd say that helped a lot because not only does it tell you or help you break through issues that you may potentially have it also lets you know like what issues are out there and mm. and by seeing like some potential dangers that you could run into it kind of helps you avoid them in the and you can write in we actually respond to uh in the mailbag section you can write in your problems and we can um we can address those on the show yep okay so second tip uh finding out what gives you the most intensity i mean once you once you get more intent, like you're doing things that allow you to have higher quality games, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a speed boost. Like you, you just get more out of every single game. So if you don't really have like a process right now, just like start off with your intensity. Like, do I warm up? Should I warm up? Like low dodge game, maybe like doing something on my computer, like just find some sort of way to like consistently get you focused because if you aren't every every game that you play that isn't focused you're kind of just throwing away because a lot of times mm -hmm. there's not that much to learn so if you have time. every game being focused then you you minimize how much time you waste i will say you know one of the themes here niall that i'm getting from this entire video from you is that you grew you're very self-aware i think you develop self-awareness through this process like you you can't, can't, kind of came in being largely unaware and you, you came out the other side being hyper aware of yourself and your emotions and how you're feeling and your mindset and your mentality. And I think this is one thing that League is very good at doing. League is a, a great medium to develop that self-awareness and reflect. And um, I would say for me personally, you know, one of the, the big problems of just society nowadays is all on the defense. Like think about it. We go from playing a League game and then you're on YouTube and then you're on your phone on Instagram and then you go on Netflix and then you're doing this and listening to a podcast we're making dinner. We're just, <laughs> we're just so, we're like bombarded by like a trillion mediums. And I think that um, if you don't give your brain a chance to like really like connect the dots, sometimes you just got to stop listening to music, stop listening to podcasts, stop like, give your your brain a chance to like just figure shit out and piece it like piece together what just happened in the past so for me my favorite thing is in the shower i love just sitting in the standing in the shower and just after my solo queue blocks and just like reflecting about what happened in my solo queue blocks i have amazing findings in the shower yeah uh, i mean like that. for me like 
I would do something similar of like I just like lay in bed and like stare at the ceiling, and then I had some of my greatest like like breakthroughs just like sitting there, and then I'd like write it down on my phone and then go to, go to bed and wake up and have this whole like catalog. Of yeah, stuff. that's actually so underrated. I, it's yeah. so it's so big. It's so underrated. And then yeah, finally, I mean, what when when people tell you to review. Um, a lot of people just assume that's like okay, and they like flip a switch, and now they're now they're a person who reviews, yeah. and, and they got it. But it's it's just not. That's just not. It's another skill, and it's and you have skill, to yeah. you you have to work on that. I mean, I know it's, personally. It's like learning to study, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I I know personally, I said I wouldn't recommend my review process to anyone else until about like ten months of working on it. Like it it, it took me a long time to really figure out like how I consistently got good answers and, and the asking why part was kind of like the core thing that I figured out. Um, and yeah, it's just like, it's a skill you have to, you can't just start reviewing one day cause you watch one coach Curtis video and, and think you're a master. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere as well. Like you're going to have the shittest quality reviews at the start, right? You're going to go in and be like, I don't know what to look for. I don't understand jack shit. Just be cu- like my, my biggest question is be curious and be open-minded, be curious, be open-minded and, and just pretend you're a toddler that doesn't know shit and just question everything. Ask why, like the Nile special, ask why, look at a few, and, and if you're unsure about where to start, start with deaths. At first eight minutes, start with deaths. Very simple. Yep. And if, if you're ever like concerned about like, if your reviews are like, if it's worth your time or anything, just, I mean, do what I do. I focus on just trying to get at least one thing out of it. Like one thing out of it and that game was worth your time. You're, you're walking away better. Like you don't have to like figure out rocket science in your reviews. Just get one thing yep. better. Exactly. So, if you were to distill everything into three things, um, number one. Yep. We, we've talked about a lot of these already, yeah. but stage three yeah. issues ASAP. Getting those out of the Get way, it just way. clears your roadblocks. Um, asking why, I mean, a good a good rule of thumb is like, when you think you've got your answer, just ask why two more times. And generally, you'll, you'll, you'll be amazed with what you can find. And then the final thing being, be honest with yourself and give yourself reality checks. Kind of like when I said earlier, how do I have the audacity to climb if I'm not reviewing and trying to get better? <laughs> it's like, if you're not sticking to a champ pool, if you know you're not reviewing, are are you really expecting yourself to climb? Like, you have to be yeah. honest with yourself and have that conversation. It's because so, I, I need to go back here and just go over one thing here. Look at this, right? Let's look at this, this, this like little checklist in a way, right? Do you have champ mastery? Yes or no? Are you confident with the fundamentals of the first eight minutes? Yes or no? Do you know your matchups? Yes or no? I, it, okay, let's just stop there, right? Let's not yeah. even get to what we're yeah. If you cannot say confidently that you've got those three things down, you don't, you can't objectively say to yourself that you deserve to like climb and be super high elo, right? Like it's just right. a fact. You're not going to yeah. get to master tier or GM without like it's not it's not rocket science, like you said. Like just just be really logical about it. And I think this is such an and why I wanted to do this interview with you because it's. I'm hoping that it does give people that reality check. It's like, this is what it, this is, if you want consistent results, not one time where you're randomly like 200 OP master, the next year D4, or like one season you're this, and then next season that. If you want like consistency, this is the only way. It's, there's no other way. Yeah. So yeah, it's I mean, like really. Yeah, it's just, it's just as simple as that. You kind of just gotta, you gotta, the biggest thing is like, a lot of people know this deep down, but they just don't like, they don't ever, I mean, it's kind of like what you said earlier, where they don't ever stop to think. And you just kind of just yeah. got to stop and just take all of what you have and realize, like, are you really doing the best you can? Like, are you reviewing? Yep. It's, it's that simple. And now what now? No, tell us a bit about what you're doing now um, and the final chapter of Nile. Yeah, <laughs> that's a little ominous, but <laughs> I, I, yeah. So, I mean, after climbing all this way, I think it's really important to always ask yourself, like, why are you playing League? For me, that was mainly, I mean, I'm really competitive, so I like being competitive, and the league was a good thing for that. But it was mainly kind of just bettering yourself. Like, I mean, I really enjoyed how I realized that, over, like, maybe like six months into the journey, I realized, like, I was becoming kind of a better person, maybe slightly more self-aware, things like that, uh, in playing league. So I, that became my main purpose. I was like, I really enjoy following the process to better myself and, and find out complex answers and things like that. And now that I've climbed all the way to, 550 LPGM. I mean, obviously I didn't hit challenger. I didn't make it all the way, but I feel like in terms of self-improvement, I've kind of, I've, I've hit a, a very high amount from league. And so the time to reward ratio of me putting in more 
time to try and better myself, I, I'm not going to get that much out of it as compared to doing other things. So, I mean, for me, I kind of just, I asked myself why I was playing League, and once I realized I was fulfilled, I, I'm, I decided I was done, and that was, that was the end of my journey. So, yeah, I'm, I'm done with League and going on to other things, taking the process with me, and, you know, just seeing where I go. And I, and I love that. I think this is a very important message, and this is something we talk a lot about in the, in the Broken by Concept podcast. The, 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 the foundation of anyone's League climb should always start with, what am I trying to get out of Solid Queue? What am I trying to get out of League? Is it a competitive outlet? Is it a, something that you want to test yourself and better yourself? Is it one where you want to um, improve your emotional regulation or, or like you said, a personal development tool? Is it something that you, it's a hobby, right? You want to be very good at your hobby. Is it something that you want to be better than your friends at? Or whatever the hell it is, win local tournaments, whatever. If you're not honest with yourself and you're just playing because you're addicted, you know, that's a problem and you need to address that ASAP. And I think that um, I really, I really love how this all ties in beautifully. It's like, you've, you've gone through this amazing process, Niall. You've become more self-aware. You've got this amazing process. There's like tools that you've developed. And now you can apply this to any other endeavor that you choose. Whether it's yeah. an instrument, a language, another sport, doesn't matter what it is. Whether it's even studies, in your studies. You know, you've probably got a new toolkit to apply to your, your studies and any other work challenge, workplace challenge. Um, so I think that's a really important message. Yeah, and I don't think... and. I mean, we've mentioned some good things here, but don't think it has to be why you're playing League. It has to be something, like, super profound and deep. Like, Agreed. I mean, I started off when I was in D4. I was like, I just want to hit really cool clips. And that's what I was playing. And, yep. I mean, hey, I, that was still part of my driving factor when I was playing in, in, in Masters and GM and whatever. So, I mean, but as long as you fun. have a reason. Yeah, have fun. But you that, had that was, fun. That's yeah. a crucial part of it. You had fun. Yeah. Uh, right? If you're not having fun, then, you know. Yeah, and, and once you have your reason... It allows you, when when tough when things get tough in the journey, like you can kind of rely and lean on your reason as to why you're playing to kind of keep you sticking around and keep you going through it. Because if you don't have a reason, it's like and you're not having fun and things are going bad. Like why would why bother? Like a lot of people quit. Especially when you're climbing to like these high when you're trying to get like GM and stuff like that. Where you're already in the top zero point zero zero some percent, right? I mean, we're trying to push the absolute limit, right? It's like one little mistake and the game's over, you know, essentially. So that's that. Um, thank you so much, Niall, for sharing your journey. Yep. And I'm hoping this inspires other people and helps people on their own journey and gives a no bullshit look into kind of what it takes. And remember, this is Niall's journey. This is not your journey. This is not my journey. Everyone has the, you need to carve your own path. Everything is here is just a tool and his, his journey. And you know, for some, like Niall said at the very beginning, maybe some of his friends who have a more sophisticated back, gaming background, maybe it wouldn't have taken that long, right? You got to find what works for you uh, to test different things and take a little, a little bit of inspiration here and try maybe a few of the things that Niall said and see what works for you. Um, so thanks Niall for, for being here and, and taking the time to chat with me. Uh, uh, this was really, really insightful and um, yeah, thank you for, yeah. thank you for your thank time you. in the MLA as well. Awesome.